say like M- Maguire was in top form and from what if it, from what I can understand we, we let him go because we offered him a one year contract on not much money and KR offered him a two year contract on, on more than he was on at Leeds and we were at that point uh, we were we, we Jordan Lilly was in, in line for his role yeah and then just look how quickly two years changes three years changes it it's, it's all shoulda woulda coulda but you know Maguire's in fine form and this is his final season isn't it yeah so let's hope he goes out with something Um okay on Friday then it was Castleford 38 Wigan 28 after <gasps> the Wigan Warriors being 24 to 8 up at half time in fact they were 24-4 up at one stage in this game 6,839 was a disappointingly low crowd I think a lot of my fellow Wigan fans chose to watch it on TV and spend their money on Barcelona tickets instead but that's uh, that's how it is um, it's a shame there wasn't more there to see what was a very exciting game uh, Chris Kendall was the referee in terms of the stats we don't actually have the full team stats as the Super League website kindly missed some of the stats for part of the cast team uh, so all we really know is that Cass outscored Wigan in tries right at the end with that last minute last second try maybe more crucially in goals as well they outscored Wigan we also know that Cass made over 400 more metres than Wigan um, so I, I think I can work this out Mitch Clark with uh, one tackle 155 metres no, what? no. Mitch Clark with one, one try, try one and 155 try. metres. The, the way you swaggered into that yeah, no. was, was you were just set for a fall. Uh, Adam Milner with we'll a try. Don't know, we're going to edit out all your sneezes, but my fuck up, well, we'll leave in. Yeah, uh, Adam, Adam Milner with a try, two <laughs> try assists, 124 metres. Liam Watts, five tackle balls, 150 metres, three successful offloads. And Grant Millington, 140 metres and three successful offloads. For Wigan, um, the That's gold, the losers. The golden edge still was in fine fettle, even though the, the, it wasn't enough in the end. Ollie Gildart, two tries, two try assists, 11 tackle busts, two clean breaks, 137 metres. George Williams, one try, one try assist, six tackle busts, two clean breaks, three successful offloads, 133 metres. On the other side of things, a few of the middles worked really hard for Wigan in this one. Ollie Partington, 51 tackles, 12 of which were mark tackles. Willie Iser, 47 tackles, 13 of which were mark tackles. Now, when you look at the stats for the Wigan forwards, four of them were over 40 tackles and four of them were over 10 marker tackles, which tells you that the... that the Whereas if you look at the cast stats, most of their middles were over 100 metres, which shows you that they really ramped it up in the second half in the mm-hmm. forwards uh, from the stats. Do you want to take us through the first bad view? So, Paul O'Brien at 1976 says, What a game. Wigan looks certain for the win before a great combat from Cass. Um, Carsten said 40 metres 40 minutes all Wigan with the it, now with the injuries came the choke Cass dominated the second half Zach Harnaker's best game for Cass this season with his goal <laughs> kicking which proved decided sorry Mark and now I can't wait for Rob's review well we should have said Rob's uh, yeah. reviews and Rob's review is number one is Cass beat cheats number two from Rob, Fat Boy Rob was Cass beat cokeheads number three is comeback kings beat cheats and then number four had a bit more going on <laughs> This is his proper one. Yeah, yeah. He said, Wigan somehow cheated their way to 24-4 lead, but a well-timed try just before the Hooter and a second-half masterclass from the Cass Pack brought the drink-drive druggies back down to earth. Cook, Millington and Watts battered the Cheeks into submission in the middle. Turner and Truman looked like seasoned pros after the break, and a Godo got, all the, got the all-important try. Only one team played for the shirt tonight. Before we get on to Helen Gapik, don't know if I agree with that. Um, <clears throat> but go on. Before we get on to Helen, I just address that. I think those defensive stats showed that those Wigan players did play for the full, mm-hmm. play, play for the um, play for the shirt, but the cast forwards did batter us into submission in the second half because yeah, they, they played very well. Helen, she tells me I met Helen on Friday night. Yeah, she, she tells me it's pronounced Gapik. I told her yeah. there's only one P. But she insisted it's pronounced Gapic, so there you go. Alright. Yeah, so Helen Gapic, what did she have to say? I was just going to say that. Helen Gapic. Phenomenal. I, if I'm entirely honest, I did not expect to win this match with the amount of talent we have on the sideline. Hashtag injury crisis. But without a doubt, Matt Cook has a huge impact off the bench. And of course, Truman ran the show like an old pro. The fans were the 14th man without a doubt. A memorable game with outstanding with an outstanding amount of of atmosphere in our beloved Weldon Road hashtag coif 
Shoddy and Mungo said, whilst Gildart looked great and really showed how patched up Cass were down that edge, what should worry Wigan fans is how they were bullied in the second half by two backup forwards. Adam Conley, 87, said, backs or forwards, which are more important? Well, we found out. The first indication it was the backs with Wigan taking a 20-point lead, but it was the Cass pack in the second half, led by Cook, which determined the winner with an utterly dominant performance with possession, with the number of dropouts. Cass perhaps should have scored more points, but credit to the young Wigan players who stepped up. What a game of RL. Yeah, I think in that first half, Cass started the game that first 10 minutes with probably a few dropouts in that spell as well. And actually, you got to say Wigan defended really well for that period, but unfortunately they couldn't hold out for the rest of the game and, and Cass really did power forward, like, uh, like Adam said. Um... Genghis Campbell at first I was like Cass in crisis but then I was Wigan in crisis but then it turned out to be Cass in crisis however it ended up as Wigan in crisis probably would have been Cass in crisis if Greenwood and Samet hadn't been injured during the game so morally Wigan won the Gildart Williams combo for the third try was a thing of beauty Lamb has stopped shaving at least you can rely on Leeds to still be in crisis Tom Andrews turns out KR aren't the only team capable of a complete second half collapse Heard, heard the two fans who prematurely let their flares off were given a lifetime ban. We're going to have appealed it though. <laughs> now we have hospitality for the upcoming six games. Ge- <laughs> Genuinely, it's it's terrible behaviour that I really have spoke out about against before. We, um, like I said, I have spoken to the club. This was someone from the club this week and. Uh, me and some other fans did raise that as something that you know well this also happened at the grand final with Wigan fans and that's why we weren't allowed to fucking drink because it happened in the stand where we were inside the building they inside the bar they let th- they f- let fans off twice and that's why they stopped all alcohol sales now I was told there was also a cast fan with a flare on the uh, the game on Friday night but I didn't, I, didn't, I, I believe the two flares that were most prominent and the one that went onto the pitch came from the Wigan fans and I thought it just encapsulated our season every time something good happens something fucking stupid has to happen as well so we take the lead mm-hmm. <laughs> we're looking like we've, we've recovered and bounced back and then they throw the flare on the pitch it's just that's the something bad I, I would hope that we could find some way of finding these people out and banning them from our stadiums or putting some sort of order on them that means they have to be, I don't know, strip searched or something Mm -hmm. um, before (laughs) a kick-off. And uh, and basically, if they want to deep throw a flare to get it in, then that's the only way they're getting it in. Uh, And, you know, part of me hopes they choke on it. Um, Right, the real fat boy Rob said... This is not the... This is the same fat boy Rob as all the other ones, by the way. But he said... that. That must have been gutting for Wigan fans. In fact, I saw a young kid who looked like he lost a fiver and found a second half collapse. <laughs> uh, Barry Mack. Oh, no. Before we got to a parody this, one. This is an in, this is an, uh, an in joke, I believe. Before we got to the parody one. Um, so what Fat Boy Rob is referring to there is I was with, I went with my little brother Matt, who's twenty, I think. Anyway, Matt forgot to pick up his wallet before he left his his uh, uni flat. So we got to Cass and I gave him the fiver that I had in my wallet for him to get some food. He thought he'd put it in his coat pocket, but he's a clumsy sod, is my little brother. Anyway, we're sat outside, um, just at the pub, the... What's the pub called? The Weatherspoons, anyway, in, in that... that uh, the glass something or other. I right. Don't know. Glass blower, mate? I don't know. Anyway, we're in that pub and... Um, we sat down around this table and a lady picks five pounds off the floor and says, Oh, is this one of yours? And it wasn't mine, because I knew that I'd given the only fiver I had to my little brother. Rob hadn't had his wallet out. Mm-hmm. The Yorkshire Bastards, tight, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only joking. But Rob hadn't had his wallet out. And um, and so, and Matt said, no, it's not mine. We got, we, we got to the ground. Mm-hmm. I said, Matt, there's where the food is. Go and get yourself your chips, blah, blah, blah. He goes away for a couple of seconds, comes back. Um, that five was mine. <laughs> he's like, like, he said, I thought I'd put it in my zip-up pocket. I was like, why didn't you check your fucking pockets before you sent that w- w- wonderful lady who was perfectly happy to give us the five on her way? Anyway, what a clown she, my little brother, is. Yeah. I mean, so I think he is in need of the first SLP bursary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Barry Matt got in touch, apparently. What did he say? I'm glad the pie-eating bastards got hammered. Never liked them, even when I played for them. 
got to be careful with these kind of things, guys. Yeah, see, yeah, <laughs> especially as they listen. Yeah, Roger the Cabin Boy said, hope none of the Wigan team drove home. Looked like they were all, they were all on the lash in the second half. So, come on then. Um, well, before the game, we spoke about the way the team selections looked up. Wigan's strength, the left edge attack, was up against Cass's weakness, their right edge defence. But Cass's strength this year so far is has been their middle unit forward, and that was up against Wigan's weakness from the squad because none of Wigan's front line mm-hmm. mi- middles, you know, Flower, Club, O'Loughlin, they were all out. Farrell obviously is out long term. Um, Sam Powell, who's our usual and our more defensively minded hooker, was was out. So, so that was a strength for them. With Millington, Massey, and Watts going, how great they're going this year. Jesse Senior Lafeo is having probably his best spell in the cast side, and Matt Cook is doing things that we don't expect from Matt Cook, to be honest, um, off the bench, I like changing games. Um, and Mitch Clark had a really great performance off the bench as well but Matt Cook it was his 100th game apparently for Castleford last night uh, he made his debut for them over 10 years ago um, wow but uh, but uh, that was a loan spell I think and then he was at London and places before he, he ended up at Cass but certainly some way to chat to celebrate mm. that and be motivated and Millington I think had a milestone game maybe his 250th or 300th mm. 300, something along those lines it was a uh, cake and so yeah, so they had to earn the appetite, didn't they, to, yeah. to eat all the cake? But did they still do the pizza cam? Did they do that? No. <laughs> so, so when 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 Cass beat Leeds, um, there was basically at, at some point when the, the TV was on. Oh yeah, yeah. There yeah. was pizzas in the dressing room, and I saw them do that a few times. Yeah, no, I, I don't know if that's still a, a feature of the coverage of Cass games. I didn't watch. I didn't watch this one back. Shockingly, <laughs> budget cuts. <laughs> but um, look. It was an exciting game. It was an entertaining game to be at. It was an ent- entertaining game to watch. For, for a neutral, it was an entertaining and I'm, game. And I'm not going to criticise this Wigan team too much. Uh, like I talked before, how remarkably well Hull KR did to bounce back from in-game injuries. Wigan suffered from in-game injuries. By the end of the game, we had none of our first-choice pack on the mm-hmm. field because Joe Greenwood went off just after half-time. Um, in-game injuries are hard to manage and Wigan, with a young, inexperienced bench, could have managed them, unfortunately. Uh, and... Castleford, on the other hand, came out after half time, and after after a very early sort of blow for Wigan losing Greenwood, but then there was the break from Tau Tai and Wigan couldn't capitalise at that stage. Uh, yeah, I mean the last try was nonsense, wasn't it? Really, let's face it. So the scoreline in reality reflects the game more as a is a is a closer scoreline than ten points. But great game by both teams, and I think if we got that every week in Super League, we'd all be pretty chuffed. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, if and by they, that I don't mean Wigan. I, I was just going to yeah. say if Wigan got a dick in yeah. every week. But yeah, that's that is what you want in a game. And as we'll come on to the the Saints and Catalans game, right until the last few minutes, you didn't know who was going to win that. And yeah. that's what you want in a game. And it was the same in this game. There still yeah. was opportunities. Joe Bullock could have taken a pass that would have put Wigan in front of it. It was just a bit too tough for him to take at the speed it was being played. Um, so, yeah, there was loads of moments like that. And Cass possibly could have scored more with all the goal line dropouts they had. It did feel like Jake Truman was resorting to the kick a little bit too easily. But in the end, it mm-hmm. probably paid dividends because it kept turning these Wigan forwards around, getting them uh, gassed a bit with having to defend so much. And it, and it worked for for them in the end because it, it allowed them to play to their strengths uh, individuals I've talked a lot about the yep. cast pack um, and we've talked a bit about Oliver Gildar and George Williams and I think they're the guys that stood out in this game in particular but it's great having Williams, Gildar Burgess back and it shouldn't just be great for Wigan fans we're talking about three real star players in, with the ball in hand that you're only going to see this year <laughs> it's entertaining to watch though isn't it it's really good to watch so we should all enjoy that as much as we should enjoy as well um some nice bits from Castleford's forwards powering over the line uh, and showing some good physicality so, speaking of close games game number three Wakefield 17 Huddersfield 16 4,730 there and Scott Michalowskis was the referee the stats don't support the close st- st- score line, but they do support that Wakefield were the winning side. They made over 300 more metres, more breaks, more offloads, and way more tackle, bus- 
Bosk. <laughs> <laughs> Um, they ended up with a 7.1 better team tackle success rate although Wakey made more errors Huddersfield gave up 11 penalties to 6 speaking of that did you see Mr Silverwood's uh, 